Hey there, my name is Volton, and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be doing a video that was actually not voted for in favor by you guys, but it was actually a third most voted. We're, we're doing this because uh, the British Empire series, you know, this one, it's dead. And that's because the, uh, somehow the save file glitched. And, uh, yeah, we can't use it anymore. So, I need a new video, because it's almost been a month. So, I had an idea. Why don't I just do the third most voted option now? And, well, that ended up being this video. So, Fascist America. Never really happened, but what if it did? Well, we're gonna make an empire, and we're gonna be basing it with Fascist America. And, we're gonna be doing a lot of expanding. Just everywhere, generally. So, let's get into it. So, to change your ideology in Age of History 2, all you need is a little bit of money, and the survivor stuff. Once you've got that all sorted, you can change your ideology. And so like that, in 1936, Fascist America was born. We even got a cool new flag now, too. And I decided to rough right the bat get started with the expansion. I would first be invading Mexico, because... Screw it. Why, why not? I decided to enlist my troops from Florida and the East Coast. Because for some reason, the middle of America is really empty. Actually, I'm pretty sure it's all desert, so it makes sense, actually. I also decided that I would also naval invade Mexico through Yucatan. I didn't realize this until a little bit into the war, but I made a big mistake. Turns out, I forgot to build a port in Puerto Rico because those don't exist already for some reason. So, I would need to build a port there while war was going on. But here's the thing, I'm dirt poor now. So I had to take out several loans which injure my economy a lot. But nonetheless, the port was built and I was able to begin the naval invasion of Yucatan. Although Mexico City is in my hands now, one problem. Now Mexico sent a lot of troops up north and naval invaded Baja, California. And that's a problem because I am dirt poor. Because yeah, I have spent literally my entire GDP on this. So I decided to go for an interesting peace deal, which was not what I originally intended, but I decided to just go with anyway. What I decided to do was annex a lot of Mexico and make the rest my puppet. Later, I would tell the puppet to join me. To which it did. However, there was some resistance to this, and you'd expect it to come from a major power, like France or Britain or even the USSR, but it was actually Colombia. I told them to fuck off. They did not listen. So they naval invaded my newly gained territory. Did that work out for them? No. I encircled all their new stuff. With this, I decided to begin working towards annexing Canada to my north. That will be the rest of my North American expansion. I decided, instead of invading them actually, that it would be better if I told them to become my puppet, and then later would tell that puppet to join me. See, I thought this was foolproof. Turns out, no. It was not foolproof. And I just said, fuck it, I'll just do a naval invasion, that, that, that'll be easier. My plan for the invasion of Canada was to mostly have defensive divisions on their border, while for the Eastern Territories, there would be troops used for offense. I want to capture the Eastern Territories first because that's where all the population is. And they would put Canada over 50% towards capitulation. I rounded up a lot of troops, I think maybe I even went broke here too, and began the invasion. And it went actually really well. All I really needed to do was maybe occasionally hire some more defensive divisions on the western border. But otherwise, it was really easy. However, I will say, I did not actually put up any defenses over in Alaska, which is actually a bit of a problem since that means the Canadians could take it, but it's actually not very, uh, it's not very valuable here, like, at all. The Canadians invaded Alaska, and we ended up liberating it during the war. However, the Canadian occupation would end up causing Alaska to have a small rebellion after the war was over. Was it easily squashed? Yes. And I was able to resolve the situation pretty quickly, so it was not a problem. Anyway, this means that my North American expansion is now complete. And now, we can begin focusing on other continents. So, let's do that. To begin building up my new empire, I decided that first I would go to Liberia and tell them to either join me or face the consequences. They chose to join me. After that, I decided on a whim to just check the technology map to see how far like everyone was developed. It turns out, I was really behind! So many countries had gotten ahead of me, even small ones. I had focused too much on expansion, and now I was lacking behind in the world stage. I needed to change. So, I did. I put all my money towards research for a while, 
until eventually, I was the most technologically developed country in the world. I surpassed all my enemies in a matter of eight months, I think. Anyway, with all that development out of the way, I figured it was time to continue imperializing and making puppet states and, you know, getting colonies. Any new colonies at this point would have to come from war. I pretty much knew that. But first, I figured, you know, well, if I'm going to be doing this, why not get some puppet states as well? So, firstly, I invaded Ireland. It was very easy. When I won, I was going back and forth on whether I should directly annex it or if I should turn it into one or two puppets. In the end, I decided to make it into just a puppet because if I annex it, that would give me a border with the UK, who was not on good terms with me at this point. Not long after that, I invaded Belgium. I snatched their homeland and invaded the Congo. I set up a fascist regime in the homeland and then annexed the Congo as well. I was able to make an alliance with my Irish and Belgian puppet states, and even got Japan to join as well. However, Japan was raised and why this alliance collapsed, actually. I decided to finish up in Africa because I decided that I wanted to start focusing in Oceania and East Asia. I decided on taking over one of Portugal's colonies. I could have invaded the entirety of Portugal and set up a new puppet regime, while snatching the colonies, I figured it would be too much hassle, so using the troops I already had in the now American Congo, I invaded Portuguese Angola, which went very well. And by the time it was captured, I annexed the territory and offered Portugal peace, which they accepted. So I was done in Africa. I then moved all my troops over to East Asia and Oceania. My first war was the invasion of Australia. It was very easy. After Australia was destroyed, I annexed all their Pacific territories in New Guinea while puppeting the rest and stating a fascist regime. I told New Zealand to join me, and I then immediately released them as a fascist puppet state while keeping their Pacific territories. I wanted to invade the, for some reason, independent Dust Each Indies because, well, yeah, it would give me a lot of prestige in the region, and you know what? That's valuable territory to have, you know? However, firstly, I decided to invade the Philippines, as it was just kind of a small nation chilling there, and there was no way it would resist. And yeah, I was right. Like, th there was no resistance at all. It was very easy. And after that was over, I decided to fully invade the Dutch East Indies. We declared war into Dust East Indies, and pretty quickly took over the area. They were able to send some troops over to Jakarta and self-liberate themselves for a bit. However, that failed and eventually, the final islands fell. It, they did not last very long though, did they? At this point, I had become strong. I was so strong, I was able to establish fascist puppet regimes in Nepal and Yunnan. I, I was able to just do that while the war was happening. That's actually kind of crazy. I also decided to make Australia and New Zealand join a new alliance with me. This one's actually still around. I didn't really want to invade Britain or France because that just kind of seemed like a doozy that I didn't really want any part of. So, that's where we're going to be leaving this. Thank you guys so much for watching. I know it's been a while, but I am recording the next episode of my Flat World. It's going to be awesome. And, uh, yeah, I hope to see you all then. Until next time, goodbye.